Let's have some fun with daily interaction number one. Hey, what's up everyone? John with WebDev for you and welcome to the daily interaction series where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Uh, today we're gonna build a menu underline animation on hover. So here when I hover over these menu items, we have a nice underline animation. And this can be a bit, a bit more interesting than just having like just a simple underline appear. With this, you can have a nice animation when the user hovers over the menu items. All right, looks good. So to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project and we'll use the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is one and then the element. So every element on the site will have a D dash one in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes. And so that we know we're working with daily interaction number one. All right, then I'll add, uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll add a section. So I'll add an element, I'll add a section and I'll give it the class name D-1 section. Uh, for the height, I'll set it to 100 VH. So it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. Then for the background color, um, I'll give it a background color of black. Then I'll go up to display setting and set it to flex and I'll set it to horizontal and justify center and align center. So anything we place within this section will be in the center. So the next thing I'll do here is I'll add a div block and I'll name this div block D-1 menu wrapper. So I'm gonna place all the menu items inside of this wrapper so that later if I want to move the menu around, um, it'll be easy to do that. I can move it in the upper left, upper right, um, and things like things like that uh, because normally you wouldn't have a menu in the center of a site so by placing it in, in a wrapper I can later uh, move it all right uh, so the next thing I'll do is I'll add a link block so I'll add an element and I'll add a link block um, so the reason I'm adding a link block is because we're having menu items so I would want to link it out to something so by so by adding a link block I can link it out to a URL a page a page section an email, a telephone number, or a file. All right, so here I'll give it the class name D-1 uh, link block. Okay, so now I'll add the text. So here I'll add an element and I'll add a text block. All right, uh, so we notice it kind of has this funky blue color and an underline. Um, so yeah, we'll fix that in a second. So here for the class, I'll name it D-1 uh, menu item text okay and then to remove the underline i'll go into the navigator i'll select the link block and i'll remove the underline so yeah the reason it has that blue text is because it's in a link block so uh, webflow is saying this is a hyperlink and it's giving it the hyperlink styling okay so here with the link block selected i'll go to typography and here for the underline i'll say none all right, and then I'll go back into the text and we'll style the text. So I'll go to typography. Um, I'll set the text to circular bold um, and give it a font weight of bold. And for the text, I'll set it to white. And let me go ahead and rename it in here. So I'll say home for the first menu item. And I'll give it a font size of, let's say 44. I'm making it real big so we can see it nice, nice and easy. Um, so yeah, uh, font size of 44 pixels and the line height of 50. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll add the underline. So I'll go into the navigator, I'll select the link block, and I'll add an element. So here I'll add a div block, and I'll call this D-1 underline. And I'll give it a height of 5 pixels, and it looks good. Or let me do uh, 10 pixels. All right, and it'll automatically fill the the parent element because it has a width of auto. And actually, yeah, the link block is inheriting its width from the, the text because the link block has a width of, of auto, so it'll inherit the width of its ch uh, child elements. 
So this underline automatically becomes the width of the length block. All right, so yeah, it has a width of auto and a height of 10. And then I'll give it a background of uh, magenta. So I'll select magenta here. And then I'll give it a negative margin because I want that underline to go a bit behind the text. I don't want it to be right underneath it. So here I'll just add an, a negative top margin to bring it underneath and a little bit behind. Okay, so now if I preview, we have all the elements, we have the text, the underline, and it's all in a link block. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into the navigator and I'll copy the link block five times so we have five menu items. So here I'll hit Command-C to copy, then Command-V to paste until I have five menu items. Then I'll double click and I'll rename each one. So home, about, uh, services, uh, contact, and yeah, and shop. Okay, then I'll select the first link block and I'll add some left and right margin. So I'll, I'll hold down Alt to affect the left and right at the same time. All right, looks good. So there we have the, me the menu items and now we want to apply the interaction. So here I'll go into the navigator. I'll select the first link block uh, because I want the underline to expand or yeah, go back to zero when we hover over the link block. So I'll select it here, I'll go into the interactions, and it's gonna be an element trigger interaction. So here for the plus symbol, I'll click the plus, or he, yeah, here for the element trigger, I'll click the plus and select mouse hover. Um, and on hover, we're gonna start an animation. We're gonna add a new timed animation, so I'll click the plus here, and I'll name this D-1 mouse N. All right, so for this, I want to affect the underline. So I'll go to the navigator and I'll select D-1 underline. I'll go back into interactions and I want, the, the way the interaction is gonna work is that first the underline is gonna be at a scale of zero. And then when we hover over, it's gonna uh, scale to one, which is its original size. And then when we hover off, it's gonna go back to zero. Uh, so here for the timed action, I'll add a timed action of scale. And the first thing I wanna do here is make sure that this lock is not locked. So yeah, so it's unlocked, um, so that the X and Y axis are not constrained, so that, you know, um, so that if I change the X, the Y won't change. If it is locked, both X and Y will change at the same time. But I only wanna change the X so that the underlying uh, scales horizontally and not vertically. Okay, so for the X, I'm gonna set it to a scale of zero, so we don't see it initially. Uh, and then for the timing, I'm gonna set it as the uh, initial state, all right? So initially we can't see the underline. Um, and then I'll add another um, time to action, so I'll say scale. Make sure it's, uh, it's unconstrained by making, making sure this lock isn't locked. And um, I'll set it to a scale of one. So it goes from zero to one, yeah, so it expands. And then for the easing, I'll set it to ease out expo, and the duration of 0.5 is okay. So now I'll preview, and I hover, and the underline is expanding. Um, so we notice a few things here. First, the underline is in front of the text, and second is it's expanding from the center. So we'll fix that after we add the interaction. We also notice that the other ones are not uh, animating, so I'll go back into the interaction. And for this, rather than affecting a selected element, so we're only affecting one element, I can affect a class. So action, excuse me, action will affect multiple elements with the same class. So I'll select this here. And now if I preview, they all get affected at the same time. So I want to affect only the underline for the specific uh, link block. I don't want to affect all the underlines at the same time. So here, rather than affecting uh, all elements with this with this class, I can say only children with this class. An action will affect only the elements inside the interaction trigger. So I'll select this, and we know that the underline is a child element of the link block because it's inside of it. So the link block is the parent element and the interaction trigger, and the underline is a child element. So only this specific underline will be affected, okay? And the other thing we wanna do is we wanna make all, all of the link blocks an interaction trigger. 
So right now, only the first link block is, it, is an interaction trigger, and we know that because we have the green circle with the lightning bolt symbol next to this link block. So only this first one is an, is an interaction trigger. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go into interactions, I'll close this here, and right here for trigger settings, rather than affect an element, we want to affect a class. So we want to trigger on all elements with the same class, and that class is d-1 link block. Um, so now if I preview, the, all the link blocks will be a, an interaction trigger, and will only target the specific underline for each uh, uh, each link block. All right, so now I'll preview, and as we can see, when we hover over each one, uh, only that specific link block gets affected. So now the last thing we need to do is um, add a hover out uh, interaction. So here on hover out, I'll start an animation. I'll duplicate the mouse in, so I'll select these three dots and select duplicate, and I'll click on D-1 mouse in two, and I'll rename it to D-1 mouse out. And for this, we don't need an initial state, so I'll delete this first one. We only need one timed action to bring the underline back to zero. So here I'll delete the, the first uh, timed action, and now we just have the second one. And for this, I'll change the X scale back to zero. So instead of one, we'll change it to zero, and we want to affect a class and only children with this class. So now I'll pre yeah, and an easing of ease out expo is okay, and and a duration of 0.5 is okay. So it'll it will have the same animation as it expands and as it goes back to zero. So now I'll preview, and there we go. So we have the animation. So there's a few things here. Um, I want to bring the text in front of the underline, and I want the underline to animate from the left to the right. So here I'll go back into the um, into the designer. I'll go into styles, and let me go into the navigator, and I want to select D-1 underline. Um, and then I'll go back into styles. I'll go down to transitions and transforms. And here where it says transforms, I'm going to click on this gear icon. So I'll select it here. And here we have the transform origin. So this is from what point the underline is animating from. So right now it's set to center, so it's animating from the center and going out. I want it to, I want it to animate from the left, so I can select the left dot here. So here we can select all these dots, so I'll just select the left one so it animates from the left to the right. So the transform origin will be on the left. So here I'll close this, I'll preview, and there we have the underline animating from the left. Looks good. And now we want to bring the text to the front. So I'll go into the navigator. I'll select uh, D-1 menu item text. And I'll go into styles. And for this, I'm going to set a position of relative. So we can work with the layer property or the Z index of the text. Um, so yeah, the Z index is, um, or yeah, the Z index allows us to bring the element further in front or further in back behind, behind other elements. Um, so yeah, it is the layer property of the element. Um, yeah, so right here we have the Z index. So I'll set a higher value. The higher the value, the more in front it is. So I'll set a value higher than zero. So I'll say something like 10. And then the text will be in the front. So yeah, we set a position of relative and set a higher Z index value for the, for the text. So now I'll preview. And now the text is in front and the underline is behind. And that's it. That's how we create a menu item animation on hover or menu underline animation on hover. All right, looks good. So now I'll demonstrate why I decided to place it in a wrapper, okay? So here I'll go into the navigator, I'll select the menu wrapper, and for this I'm gonna set it to a position of absolute. So right here I'll set it to absolute, and now I can position it in the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, uh, bottom top, I can set a display setting of flex, set it to horizontal, center, center, uh, to have the text in the center, or the menu items in the center, um, and yeah, looks good. So <clears throat> that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's why I decided to place it in a wrapper, because now I can easily move it anywhere I'd like. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'll position it in the top right, and I'll change the font size for the menu item. So I'll select the menu item and set it to something like 
uh, 24 and the line height to 30. Then for the underline, I'll set it to, uh, to five pixels and the top margin, I'll make it like negative, negative eight. All right, and then I'll add some margin to the menu wrapper. So I'll say something like uh, 20 from the top and 40 from the right. And it looks good. So now when I preview, we have this nice uh, menu with an underlying animation. All right, looks good. Yeah, because normally you wouldn't have the menu in the center, so we're just moving it around. And by having it in a wrapper, we can move all the menu items at the same time and assign different properties to it. All right, looks good. So that is it for daily interaction number one, uh, creating a menu underline animation on Hover. To view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.